Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in the series. We start our tour today at the Jaffa Gate, one of the eight different gates built into the walls of the old city. The Jaffa Gate was constructed sometime around 1538 by the Ottomans. As we begin our tour, we are greeted with a magnificent band parade by young students, perhaps for the special occasion of Christmas. I'm not very sure, but this is definitely a very good start. As we follow the parade further, we enter the narrow lanes of the old city of Jerusalem, which is divided into four quarters, the Muslim quarter, the Armenian quarter, the Christian quarter, and the Jewish quarter, signifying the importance of this roughly one square kilometer area for all of these different groups of people. Catholics say the first patriarch is uh, Peter. But this is the world church. Uh, uh, Today we mostly walk around the Jewish, uh, Armenian and the Christian quarter, visiting some of the holiest places in the world, uh, the led by our guide Sharon. Uh, uh, the Jewish Christians, the first uh, you know, generation after the Jesus, uh, they were Jewish, they, they were, most of the Christian were Jews, so he was the leader. As we walk along, we see the remnants of previous empires and civilizations, which match pretty well with the descriptions in the Bible. This is the Hurva Synagogue in the Jewish quarter of the Old City. Originally founded in the early 18th century, this synagogue has been built on the ruins of an older 15th century synagogue. This is the only surviving historical synagogue here. And we now enter the holiest site of the Jews, the Temple Mount. This is the site where the Jews believe the first and second temple stood and the third final temple will be built when the Masih arrives. The retaining walls that you see were built by King Herod the Great for an expansion of the second temple. Notice the two glorious domes in the background. The one on the right is the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the one on the left is the Dome of the Rock. This place is the third holiest site for Sunni Muslims. It is the location of Muhammad's journey to Jerusalem and his ascent to heaven. The part of the wall right in front of me here is the Holy Western Wall. Mind you, Jews aren't allowed inside the Temple Mount for political reasons and therefore this is the closest they can get to the site of the ancient Holy Temple. I was lucky to be here on Sabbath, which is the Jewish day of prayer and rest. We continue onwards towards the Christian quarter to the holy sites in Christianity. Now this is where we get to the interesting part. We now follow the route that Jesus was made to take on the way to his crucifixion. The Via Dolorosa has 14 stations in total, starting from his encounter with Pontius Pilate, where he was condemned to die, all the way to his burial site. This is the fourth station in the Via Dolorosa, the Church of St. Mary of Agony. This is where Jesus was said to have met his mother while carrying the cross on his back to his crucifixion. Now what you see here is difficult to believe, but this is what the traditional belief has been for centuries now. As Jesus carried the cross on his back and walked, he stumbled and to get support, he placed his hand on the wall here. Jesus' handprint on the wall still remains and that's what we see here. Whatever be the truth, this is definitely part of the legend. And now it's my turn to touch the wall. We walk onwards through the narrow lanes towards the ultimate site, the Church of Sepulchre, built atop where Jesus was crucified. His burial site stands next to the crucifixion site as our guide mentions. To be buried and uh, uh, 
it's written that it's next to the to the cross crucifixion site. And All right, so right now I am in the perhaps the most holiest place in Christianity. What you see over here is first of all um, the church of Sepulchre. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So this is where Jesus was crucified. And then this is the tomb where Jesus was then buried. I'll show you inside as well. Now this is literally where Jesus Christ was crucified around AD 30 or 33 by the Romans. It is a tradition to bend down to touch the rock into which the cross was supposedly fixed. One can put their hand through the hole to touch the actual rock atop which this church has been built. It's my turn now to do the same. The feeling of being here present in this moment on the eve of Christmas is extremely humbling and I guess I got very lucky to have this experience. And this is the site where Jesus was then buried, next to where he was crucified. We now enter this Armenian chapel built by Saint Helena, the mother of Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. This is where the original cross was said to have been found by her when she arrived here. We now go down the stairs to the exact location where the cross was found, just next to its crucifixion and burial site. The walls behind the glass enclosures are from the early state of the church, before any renovation was done. And this is where uh, Queen Helen, she found the real cross. And you see, this is, we are actually inside the mountain of Sierra right now. And usually when you see a woman inside the church, or it's Mary or Mary Magdalene. But you see a woman with a crown uh, that's uh, uh, Queen Helen, the mother of your father. So, with this, we come to an end of the old city tour, and now we are headed for Bethlehem. The place where Jesus was born. It's about to be Christmas in five hours and soon I'll be there. Let's see how it goes. I'll take a picture and I will and then be And this guys is Bethlehem for you. We are now officially in West Bank, Palestine. We now walk towards the Mangra Square where the Christmas celebrations are ongoing. After a hearty Christmas dinner with lamb and red wine, it's time to join the Christmas celebrations at Mangra Square, the site of the Church of Nativity. It is believed to be the location of the birth of Jesus. Now, of course, as you can see, the celebrations aren't as grand as usual due to the COVID restrictions. Moreover, entry into the church is only allowed if you have a pass. And guess what? I don't have it. But the fantastic news is that the Palestinian guards were kind enough to let me and a few others inside without a pass. That's what happens when luck goes your way. Time to attend the Christmas Midnight Mass at the very place where Jesus was born. It is 
at emotional moments like these that you wish to become religious. And it's Christmas guys! A Merry Christmas to all of you! Alright, so with that we end the tour today. This was absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, initially I was not very impressed outside, but once we entered the church, the church of nativity, this is exactly where Jesus was born. It was a very spiritual kind of an experience and I really loved it. And now it's time to head back to Jerusalem. This was like Christmas really well spent. So it's 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm back in Jerusalem. All right, so as you can see, it's like the streets are almost completely empty. It's pretty cold as well. I'm, I guess it's around five degrees or so but yeah it's pretty nice to be here beautiful place honestly I had a lot of fun today started with a tour of the holy city of Jerusalem the old city of course you know the route that Jesus took on the way to his crucifixion and then we made our way to Bethlehem in Palestine West Bank and attended the midnight mass over there Today is Christmas and finally I'm quite tired. I'm heading back to my hotel which I've booked for t for tomorrow night in a way. You know the check-in is at 3 p.m. but I'm almost gonna be there at 3 a.m. so 12 hours early. Let's see how to respond to that. But yeah, it's been pretty good so far.